joyful Christmas welcome. It's a pleasure to be, oh my goodness, a pleasure to be with you tonight. My name is Kevin Cook. It's been my honor to be with you on no, numerous Sundays over the past year of interim. We wish Pastor John Trinkline and his family a, a very happy Michigan Christmas. He's getting more weather, I think, than we are right now. Uh, we look forward to his safe return. If you're worshiping with us on Zoom, we ask you to mute your, your microphone so we don't hear your family joy here at church. And if you have prayer requests, send those through the chat uh, uh, function. Uh, the the, the uh, beautiful, beautifully written introduction, I don't know who wrote it, I did not. Whenever a friend or a family member is expecting a child, we experience a season of love as a community. We pause and reflect on the hopes and dreams each one has for that tiny baby. Tonight, we also pause and reflect on the great love that God has shown us in sending his son, Jesus, as a baby. Like Mary, we have been waiting expectantly for her child, Emmanuel, God with us. And tonight, the hopes and dreams of all the years come together in Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas. We rise to begin our worship. We gather, as always, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me, please. O oh, come, all ye faithful. On this night, we celebrate God humbly coming as baby Jesus, God's love in the flesh. 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them, them the, the light, light has shined. shined. We have, we have beheld, beheld his glory, glory the glory of the, of the only Son from, from the, the Father. Father. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God with us. And it's in his name that we worship, live, and hope. In the name of God, our Father, who is ever loving and faithful to his good promises. Our gracious Savior. In the name of God, the Holy Spirit, who is our guide and renews our hope. We thank you for your great love. We join in singing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Mother and 
Share the gospel. Today's readings are from Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in these days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, <clears throat> to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she went, brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is 
Now there were at the same, in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this city and the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the sayings which were told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Please rise. Can't sing this one sitting down.
Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. The word of God for us tonight. Behold, 
I'm so glad we finally made it to Bethlehem. It has taken four weeks or more to get here. Some have planned, some have shopped, some have decorated. I hope all of you have baked. And now we and the Holy Family and the shepherds and the three wise guys from the East, everyone has arrived in Bethlehem, the city of David. Welcome. The Old Testament tells us that God chose this little village in Israel many years before that first Christmas to be the site of his own son's birth. He announced his selection of the Savior's birthplace through his prophet Micah about 800 years before the birth of Jesus. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be the ruler over all my people. And God's selection of little Bethlehem becomes a wonderful object lesson for his people for all time, us tonight as well. As we see God in his grace choose Bethlehem and work out his plan of salvation for the whole world through that sleepy little Jewish village, we can more fully appreciate that he also chooses us, small, insignificant, sometimes sleepy, to be his own dear children and work his good and gracious will for us and through us for the world. The population of Bethlehem was only a few hundred at the beginning of the New Testament. Doesn't it seem strange that God did not choose Jerusalem, the nation's ch uh, capital, its largest city, the center of commerce and political power? It was the site of King David's royal palace and the great temple. Why choose this little farming village for such a great event as the birth of the savior of the world? But just as God years earlier had chosen a sleepy little shepherd boy, David, from Bethlehem over his older and stronger brothers to begin Israel's royal house, so too God chose one of Israel's least important towns. Bethlehem was a wide spot in the road. That's where he chose to bring forth his plan of salvation. God often seems to choose unimportant people to do very important work. Moses, a Jewish slave by birth, a convicted murderer at the, at the Egyptian court, he certainly wondered out loud, me, Lord? Why me? Why choose me to lead your chosen people out of slavery? The angel Gabriel and cousin Elizabeth both greeted Mary, little sweet teenage Mary, with words of praise and awe and honor. But Mary was shocked that God would choose her, a young peasant woman with nothing to refer her. And no one would ever have imagined that illiterate, 
and somewhat foul-smelling fishermen from Galilee would create the world's greatest force, the Christian church. The choice of Bethlehem then reminds us that we who are pretty little, that we who feel quite unimportant in the scope of things are still the children of God Almighty. And God has chosen to cherish you, to love you, to save us. What a comfort this reminder is when we feel belittled by the words and actions of others, when we feel overwhelmed by the guilt of our sin, when we feel beaten or downtrodden by all the failures that we experience, mostly of our own doing. It is God Almighty who chooses us in his undeserved love our place in his kingdom then, both on earth and in the life to come, emphasizes his greatness, not our weakness. The word Bethlehem in Aramaic or Hebrew means house of bread. It's a wonderful description for that farming village. It is set in a beautiful valley, lush vineyards and gardens, wheat and barley fields. From Bethlehem would come one, the prophet says, who will stand and feed God's flock, a wonderful agricultural image for his people. But man does not live by bread alone. Jesus quoted the Bible when Satan tried to tempt him. While we work for what is eaten or used up, what breaks or dies away, while we enjoy the gifts we will share with each other tonight, there came to Bethlehem that first night, and to us today one who is the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. So what is your spiritual diet these days? Come to the Lord's table. Come to receive his holy word and his sacrament into your heart and mind and soul. Receive the fullness, that abundant satisfaction that Jesus promises us that we may have life and that more abundantly. And it is a life that only Jesus Christ can offer. And with such a gift, the bread of life, with such abundance being fed to us, we will receive the promise of the prophet Micah, and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. With Jesus Christ as the main dish of that heavenly feast we'll enjoy one day, I will never be hungry again. With Jesus Christ providing us with everything we need to live and work and to celebrate, we don't need anything, not even for Christmas. God's choice of Bethlehem assures us that each one of us and all people are objects of his love. None are excluded. No one is preferred above the other. In Jesus, God's great love extends to the ends of the earth. Barriers of gender or age, race or income, educational level, where you live, whatever, are not accepted by God and they must not be accepted by God's people. And so will God's choice of little Bethlehem or little us remind us to show Christian hospitality to others? Will we welcome all people into his house, into his family, into our Christmas celebration? Or is there no room at the inn for people that don't look like us, or we don't know, or I haven't seen you since last Christmas Eve? May none among us ever feel left out or neglected at Christmas. Let us work to live in harmony with one another. Let's welcome each other as we say we would have welcomed that little Christ child on that first Christmas night. Truly Bethlehem, O oh little town of Bethlehem, is a wonderful lesson for each of us that out of insignificance comes greatness, that out of that little village would come the Savior of the world, that out of men and women, boys and girls like you and me, God can lift up power for his world and his people. Come, let us even go then to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has made. In the name of the babe of Bethlehem, amen. One of the greatest gifts that comes with our Christian faith is the invitation to bring our needs and our desires and our wishes 
to Jesus in prayer. I invite you to sit back and take a quiet moment. We have a long prayer list. Our, you know, it seems our, our list never gets shorter. The names might change, but we always have more names to add, people who need healing in body and soul and mind. And so sit back and close your eyes and pray with me as you also add names from your heart to us. Lord God, our maker, on this holy night we gather and we are reminded again and again of how little and insignificant we really are, how nothing we seem to be in the scope of things. And yet you have called us, each one of us, to be your own dear child. Thank you, Lord God. We don't deserve your love. Help us to live up to it. Help us to live in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the great physician. It is only through you that we may be healed of that which affects our body and soul. Who suffer illness and calamity. We pray for so many who have been affected both physically and economically by the COVID pandemic. We pray for Kathleen, Ginny, and Joe, for little Finley. We pray for Klaus and Jadviga, for John and Les and Lynn, for Elda and for the De Angelis family. We pray for Lucas and Naomi, for Peg and Craig, for my sister Sally, and for all those whom we name in our hearts before you, Lord. Heal them as you know best. Save them and bless us all, Lord, in your mercy. Father God, at the happiest time of the year, there are many who mourn the death. We pray especially for Erin, who mourns the death of her beloved husband, Andrew. For those who will suffer violence or accidents or disasters, we pray as this great storm is raging through our nation that many will be spared from that calamity. Lord, keep us in your protective care. And we pray also as we end this year, 2020, we pray for our continued gifts of community at, at Somerset Hills Lutheran Church. Bless this congregation, bless Pastor Trinkline and all the volunteers and staff who step forward to lift us up as a, as a place of light and love in a dark world. Lord God, be with the teachers and the sweet children in Gentle Shepherd Christian Preschool. Let the love of Jesus grow in each heart and take that love home to spread it further. And finally, as we look at 2021, a new year of your grace, we pray for our nation, that all the division and all the, the enmity of the past few months of political conversation may be swept aside and buried and healing happen for the good of all. Lord, we are in your hands. And so we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue with the litany on your screen. Dear Lord, we are gathered here to worship you and rejoice because of the gift of Jesus to us. May your love and joy fill our hearts, not because of material things or sentiment, but from a living relationship in you, our Savior. As we recognize our need for a Savior and the forgiveness earned for all, may we remember your generosity and sacrifice and live each day at peace, trusting your mercy following the example of Jesus. May we be willing to be generous with our time, our abilities, our gifts, and our love. Lord, help us to rejoice each day as your grace and mercy come to us. Send your spirit among all who are ill or sad or troubled by life's problems. Give them and us your strength and the assurance that nothing will ever be able to separate us from your love that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit, empowering us to proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior in thought, word, and action. Hail the newborn King, who lives forever, 
King of kings and Lord of lords. Alleluia. Amen. We continue with the little town of Bethlehem. pray as Jesus himself taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise to hear the gospel. From St. John, the first chapter, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my new testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we speak the Agnus Dei, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. I invite you to take the small communion that you have brought in with you, peel off the top and take a small toast. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus Christ given for you. The same manner also, uncovering the wine. Take and drink the true blood of Jesus Christ shed for you on the cross at Calvary for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may this holy and precious body and blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart with joy to serve God's people. Receive the benediction of our God on Christmas night. Now may this light of the world shine in your hearts. May you be his light in your corner of the world. And as his light, 
May you experience and share the living hope of the prophets, the adoring love of Mary, the humble obedience of Joseph, the simple joy of the shepherds, the reverent devotion of the Magi, and the lasting peace of the Christ child. And may this precious gift fill your hearts and minds with love and joy today and always. Amen. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Joy to the world. Go with great joy to shine his love, grace, and mercy wherever we go. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hi, Becky. Merry Christmas. How are you? Oh, hi. Merry Christmas. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hi, Pastor Paul. Merry Christmas. Hi, Sally. Merry 